my name is George McGuire, and I'm, I've been working as a humanitarian healthcare logistician for the last 25 years, and uh, very honored to join a vibrant and innovative team in Oslo as an LMIS technical advisor. So today I will build on <clears throat> what uh, Scott started introducing uh, uh, yesterday on the WHO meta package and go into some more details on the LMIS. Just to be sure, uh, logistics is my speciality, so I usually refer to uh, LMIS, but of course we are always talking about HMIS and LMIS integration and uh, logistic indicators concept for end users. So I will often use the term health facility, but in fact, um, the, the concept is designed for any kind of end user. As Scott mentioned yesterday, it could be a community health worker, could be um, a traditional heal, uh, healer or um, birth attendant or any anyone who is uh, um, using, uh, storing, uh, administering, dispensing uh, medical supplies to patients. So I will present some uh, um, general principles, some of which uh, Scott already touched on, on yesterday, which are uh, rather abstract, but I will, will be, the details will become more clear when I present the actual indicators. So one of the general principles is all the data should be entered directly into DHIS2. So I think this was um, mentioned during the presentations yesterday that one of the constraints in the current LMIS is that they're often paper-based and then reports have to be sent to the district level where they then entered and there's long delays, Scott mentioned yesterday, up to 18 months for the data and the reports to trickle up. So entering directly into DHIS2 ideally on a mobile device allows to share all the data in real time. Uh, all the metrics are uh, eventually all the metrics to be measured directly in DHIS2. So basically storekeepers or health staff or logisticians enter data and the calculations are then done automatically in DHIS2 so that there's no need to um, perform any calculations with a calculator or um, in a separate document. Uh, what we noticed during our extensive work with uh, mainly with the World Health Organization on developing this, uh, this uh, framework is that there's often confusion on terminology. So we distinguish between logistics data and actual performance indicators, which I will explain in a minute. Um, it's just, I think, useful to keep these two terms apart conceptually. And uh, the health facilities only measure metrics at the facility level. So uh, Scott explained this in detail. We don't want to develop DHIS2 into an um, um, enterprise resource planning tool or a, a tool that covers the entire supply chain. Um, so basically the, the measurement, the data recording should be limited to data that is actually collected at the health facility at the end user level and it is not available upstream. Um, ideally, all the data, if you are integrating DHIS2 with an LMIS will be available in that system. And then if you collect it a second time at the health facility level, it will application, let's say lead time. Normally that should be uh, routinely measured by any upstream LMIS. Uh, one thing that we noted, there was quite a lot of uh, duplications, different formulations, different calculations of indicators. So it's important to have a single indicator for measuring a specific, uh, for a specific measurement, let's say shortages or stock out, there's many uh, variations to avoid redundancy because otherwise you risk measuring five or six different indicators, but at the end the, their meaning is, or the consequence of the action is basically the same. This Scott already mentioned, I think this is an important point that we, um, we are striving to standardize um, the, the, the concept and the indicators across all items, commodities, usually cost of healthcare goods and across health facility or also programs. So um, currently different programs have different ways of measuring indicators, maybe uh, with a similar um, result, a similar meaning. And uh, it would of course make it much easier for, for everyone if there could be an agreement on some standardized uh, 
indicators and metrics while you're still free to develop uh, specific uh, indicators if that is needed. I will come to that later. We want to keep the, simple, the system as simple as possible. So you will see that we basically cook down uh, a large list of uh, indicators to a very few. Um, it's also important um, for the performance management in general to realize that, of course, logistics is the main actor in providing logistic services in terms of making sure that all the goods are available at the health facility. But all health actors, uh, all health staff have an impact on logistics performance and can contribute to uh, improving it. But it's also important to have a clear separation of responsibilities and actors of uh, accountabilities and actors in terms of who measures which indicator and who takes which action on win what indicator. So we'll come back uh, to that in more detail on my second presentation next week. And also to keep in mind that we all know that we do a lot of reporting and that will not go away, but ultimately the objective of the performance measurement and of implementing uh, or expanding LMIS is to improve health services to patients and not only to um, generate more and more sophisticated uh, reports. So we want to maximize stock availability. That's uh, basically the ultimate objective of any logistic service to make sure that all the items that are needed at uh, health facility community level are available at all times. So we have basically two concepts, a basic and advanced um, way of measuring recording data and measuring indicators. So the basic package is the WHO metadata package that uh, Scott already showed yesterday, and that is already available or will be available very shortly. And the in the basic package, you enter aggregate quantities by item, so by stock keeping unit, and that is to, usually done on a monthly basis at the end of the month. So you record your stock on hand or your, your stock issues uh, once a month. And all the data is, is uh, logistics data is entered manually. That means you have a record or you physically count your stock and then you enter the numbers into uh, ideally a mobile device directly in DHIS2. And uh, for the, I will explain the distinction of manifestation root cause indicators in a minute. So the indicators like the stock out days and the discarded stock, all those have to be entered manually. So all the data recording, uh, data entry will be done manually, uh, I lean in a mobile device, either directly or from, from paper records that will still be necessary. But we also already building for the advanced system that will also be possible uh, thanks to the advanced functionality of LMIS and uh, which we have tested in Yemen. I will come back to that later. So that's the not too far future. It is in principle already possible, but it still has to be built out and refined. In this uh, advanced package, it will be possible to manage um, medical products at, uh, at the product level um, with individual batches and even with uh, serialized numbers if you want to do that. Scott already mentioned that there's a, a push to record uh, vaccines at the batch level or even at the serialized number level for vaccination uh, campaigns. And the other feature of the advanced system is that the logistics data will be um, brought into the system uh, exclusively or almost exclusively by digital entry. So that means by using a barcode scanner for all the stock issues, for example, and then ideally the receipt of stocks rather than having to type it, it could be entered into the DHIS2 by electronic data interchange. That means by an electronic file that is downloaded or uploaded from the upstream LMIS directly in DHIS2. Of course, you still have to check your stock, but once you confirm that it is complete, basically press a button and all your stock is added to the DHIS2 database so that you don't have to enter this manually. If you are managing, let's say, ARVs or malaria stocks or vaccine stocks, and you have five or 10 or 15 items, the manual entry works well. 
But if you have a larger facility and you're managing, let's say 250, 300 or 400 items in the hospital, then the manual entry is quite cumbersome and prone to error. And uh, since all the data is uh, brought into the system automatically, that will also then allow to calculate all the indicators fully automatically and create and uh, create a dashboard. And of course, if you enter the data um, as you receive goods um, or as you issue the goods, you can also have real-time data. So this is not monthly reporting, but at any time you can go into the system and you can check your stocks. What is important is that uh, we are planning to have both options. So every, no one is forced to uh, use advanced system soon or everyone basically uh, decide uh, how you want to progress from a basic system once it's implemented to an advanced system and whether you want to do that for only some facilities or all facilities or only certain places. So we are aware that there's different needs. People are moving at different speeds and we will accommodate that by building a system that allows to do any of those, uh, implement any of those two modes and switch between them uh, at any time. So the overview of the framework, as I mentioned, um, we distinguish between logistics data and indicators. So logistics data uh, can further be differentiated into stock management and stock replenishment. So those, those are just numbers, statistics and facts. And then for the indicators, I realized that in uh, DHS2 indicator has a, a particular meaning. Um, we differentiate between manifestation indicators, uh, which basically indicate a symptom, I will explain in a minute. And those are fully standardized. And then the root cause indicators, which try to identify the root cause of a problem of the symptom which will allow to correct it and those are derived. So if you have a certain manifestation indicator like stock out, then of course you have only certain causes that can cause a stock out. So you're not free to choose your root cause indicators anymore. And then uh, you will have program, there will be the possibility always remains to have program specific indicators. So we try to standardize, but uh, nobody is compelled to limit their indicators to only the few that I will present in a moment. So there are certain needs for programs to have specific indicators and those can still be customized to individual countries or national protocols or individual programs as needed. But we still hope that the standardized basic indicators will be used by everyone so that you have a shared basis across programs and items. And the, the issue of terminology um, will come back, uh, is coming back again and again. So we are still working on WHO to complete the, the terminology. So if you have any comments on this, I highly appreciate it. So logistics data, as I mentioned, those are just facts, those are just numbers. They are indispensable for any LMIS. So I'm not saying that um, because they are not indicators in the strict sense that they are not needed. They're in, on the contrary, they're absolutely needed but they're not performance indicators. So if you take, for example, the stock on hand, stock on hand is just a number. So if I tell you that I have 15,000 tablets of paracetamol in stock, it doesn't give me an indication on whether I'm managing my stock well or badly. Uh, you could argue that if you have no stock, that indicates that you have a stock out, but only if you actually want to keep this item in stock. So those are just numbers that basically have to be interpreted in order to have a meaning or to derive an action from that. So uh, those numbers don't give as such, don't give an indication on the performance or the quality of logistic services that are provided. And those in the basic system, they're all entered manually or they could be uh, calculated. So I'm uh, presenting the, uh, the logistics data in detail so that you, which you have already seen from the screenshot from uh, Scott uh, yesterday from the DHIS sand, uh, DHIS2 sandbox to which you have access. So the opening balance is a stock on hand from the last day of the previous month. Um, and this correct um, on the first day of the month then you will add the stocks received. So those all the quantities that you have received 
at your into your stock, usually from upstream logistics services from a from a medical warehouse, but it could also be redistributed from another health facility. And uh, the stocks distributed, those are all the stocks, uh, all the, the quantities that are leaving your stock. So they could even either be given directly to patient, like in case of a vaccination campaign, or they could be distributed to a ward or service uh, such, as, uh, such as in a hospital. Then it's inevitable to have some uh, damaged stock from time to time, which has to be discarded. So it could be either expired in stock or it is damaged because it was dropped or it was damaged uh, because the cold chain was not maintained. And those stocks then have to be uh, discarded and have to be recorded, of course. Then <clears throat> this was already discussed. There's a possibility that you redistribute stock uh, could be uh, sent to another facility or returned to, to the sender. And then eventually I will come back to that later in, uh, in more detail on the second presentation uh, next week that um, ideally once you have recorded all these numbers um, you will have a correct uh, stock on hand count but you may have discrepancies. So you could have stock that is unaccounted for, unaccounted losses, let's say pilferage or a mistake was made that you cannot identify and usually it's a loss but uh, you also have rare cases where actually you find that you have more in stock that you should have because there was a calculation mistake or because more was shipped than indicated in, in the packaging and at the end of the month uh, you will once you have reconciled uh, um, major stock correction then um, your stock on hand should um, be the same as the, the closing balance and that becomes your opening balance for the for the next month. I think these are numbers that we have all used uh, that are used everywhere. It's just a matter of, of like harmonizing and eventually agreeing on the terminology. So this is the screen that um, Scott has shown already. If you yesterday, if you go on um, the DHS2 sandbox facility stock reports tool, then you will see received, distributed, discarded, redistributed stock on hand. And then there is one uh, indicator, we'll come to that later, that needs to be entered manually, that is the, the stock out days. So I will just briefly touch on um, the second category, the inventory control, which I don't want to go in detail today, but we are fully aware that of course, in order to have stocks at the healthcare facility, you have uh, stock replenishment and ordering is absolutely critical. So there's different way of doing it. It could be done at the health facility. Usually it could be calculated uh, at the district level. There's different variations. That's why it's quite a complex uh, issue. So this includes certain parameters and, and settings. Eventually the inventory control, the stock replenishment will be determined by national policies. Often there's guidelines, how often to deliver, having minimum order quantities, uh, and so on. Ultimately, it will be uh, a management decision in the country or in the health facility, how to, which policy to adapt, adapt. But this is also a recurring theme that um, it is important to measure uh, logistics performance, especially the stock availability and the stock out rates. But at the end of the day, if stock outs uh, persist, then the way you replenish your stock is absolutely the key issue on ensuring that uh, your, your stock availability increases. So we have, this is not part of the first WHO package, but this will be a part of a wider discussion next year. Also um, depends on how you want to use DHAS2 in conjunction with other upstream LMIS systems as uh, Scott pointed out yesterday. So that's a more complicated discussion. I'm just listing the elements that you need to have uh, for any um, inventory control system um, at the bottom. But of course, I think this is, a, is an excellent strategy. You can't manage stocks without having the basic logistics data. So you're not able to calculate your order unless you know your stock on hand and your, uh, your issued stock uh, and your stock receipts. So um, the first step is to implement uh, the first WHO package, which will basically lay the foundation 
on which then the uh, advanced packages can be built or which will allow to integrate DHIS2 which other, uh, with an upstream LMIS, which then will provide uh, those additional data uh, settings, parameters and, and data. So, as I mentioned earlier, we distinguish between manifestation indicators and root cause indicators. This may be a bit of a strange name. If you have an alternative title to propose, most welcome. So the way I look at this is basically a symptom, uh, for example, a stock out. So the purpose of the manifestation indicator is to monitor a certain aspect of logistic services, for example, stock availability, which is of course the obsession of all the logisticians, um, to determine what is the quality of services. So obviously if I have no stock outs, I have an excellent service. Um, what is important for manifestation indicators to have a clearly defined target range. It's very difficult to maintain 100% stock availability. You can always uh, strive for continuous improvement, but you should there's a need to define in a policy that you're aiming, let's say, for ideally 97, 98, if you can, 99% uh, stock availability, because you need to compare the result of your monitoring with the target range in order to determine whether you need to take any action or not. The manifestation indicator, uh, so basically answers two questions. Is there a problem? Do we have a problem? And how big is the problem? So if you have, uh, if you have, if every item was out of stock during the past month, obviously the problem is much bigger than if you had stockouts only on a single item. So it allows you to to have an idea of um, how urgent it is need, uh, the, how urgent um, the issue needs to be addressed. And the importance of having the target range and the monitoring is that if you determine that um, the, the measurement result of your manifestation indicator is below or outside the target range, then you need to find out what the root cause of the problem is. So the manifestation indicators we have, uh, I mentioned earlier, we want to have a very simple system. We have basically uh, determined only two that you will have in the first WHO package that is stock outs. Uh, usually measure this number of days of stock out. I put shortages in brackets because um, a stock out is just an extreme way of having a shortage. You could have just a few tablets left and it's a near stock out. So that's also a problem, <clears throat> but stock out is what is easy to measure and what is very visible. And then the second um, manifestation indicator is discarded stock which are stock losses. Again, if you have a large number of big quantities of stock that are lost that have to be discarded, it still doesn't tell you why you have these losses. You just know for a fact that those goods um, have to be discarded, have to be disposed of and are not available in stock, which is a problem, but then you still have to go back and to find out what the reasons are. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you could have program specific indicators. We'll come to that later because um, as always DHIS2 wants to keep the flexibility. We don't want to lock anybody into these two uh, manifestation indicators, but we believe that uh, basically everyone will be interested in these two indicators and you will measure them. And then in addition, if there's uh, program specific indicators who can still be uh, added. So, I think it's important that we are all in logistics uh, familiar with uh, with measuring and reporting, but there's a risk that you submit reports and you monitor, but at the end of the day, the logistics services are not improving. So the measuring in itself is almost useless um, if you can't or if you don't want to improve services. So basically, this is just to make the point, if you don't want to improve services, don't measure. It's like, um, carrying out a diagnosis on a patient where you know that you don't have a treatment for them. So there's, there's limited value in doing that. So <clears throat> that's important. In, that's kind of one of the fundamental underlying principles of the, of the performance management concept is that the ultimate uh, purpose of performance management is to improve services and not only to um, 
generate resort, uh, reports that make donors happy or other people happy. So the root cause indicators are, are the second group. And so the purpose of the root cause indicator is basically the diagnosis. So you have a symptom, like somebody has a fever. And now, of course, if you determine that the patient has a fever, you want to know what is the reason for that fever. So the purpose is to, to determine the, the causes the cause or if there are several causes of the problem so that you can take some corrective action. Um, manifestation indicators determine root causes. So what it means is that um, the, manif the root cause indicators is not something that you can choose freely. I mean, you could um, choose that you want to measure stock outs or you don't want to measure them. But if you want to determine the root cause for stock outs, there's not that many, and therefore um, the root cause indicators follow from the manifestation indicators. I will explain in a minute. Um, so a certain symptom like a stock out can have several root causes, could have one or several root causes. But as I mentioned already, we want to have only one indicator um, for every root cause. Uh, so we don't want to have multiple measurements that are measuring the same problem or the same phenomenon. Um, we only want to measure something that can be changed where you have, can take a management decision and an action to actually improve, to correct the root cause and therefore improve the services. Um, same for as for the manifestation indicators, you'd have defined thresholds for taking action. Maybe you have different thresholds. So you could say that if you have one or two stock outs, uh, one or two items are out of stock, out of uh, uh, 10 items or 20 items, you need to look into it. But of course, if you have, if every item was out of stock in the last month, then you have to take urgent action. So ideally you would have a kind of action plan determining the urgency and the type of action. It's also important for indicators to be measured by one actor. So to be very clear on who is doing what, who is responsible for measuring and reporting. And even more important is to have, um, specific actors taking corrective action uh, to clearly define that. Otherwise you risk the blame game that people are just blaming each other. And uh, as in the end, nothing changes. As I mentioned, often there are several actors which impact the quality of logistic services and everyone needs to improve on her or his side in order to improve the overall performance. And again, the, the mantra is fix the problem, don't only measure, but fix the problem. And the ultimate objective is to improve health services by maximizing stock availability. So on the right side, you can see the, um, the root causes for the manifestation indicators. I'll come back to that also next week. Uh, for stockouts, there's not that many reasons. Surprisingly, when you start to think about it, there's not like dozens of reasons why you have stockouts. Uh, so you could have been adding new items that were not used until there, because uh, the, until then, because the protocols which were changed, obviously a buffer of safety stocks could be set to low, or you have not used an impress system, and we're not going to that today, but let's say the inventory control system or the repl stock replenishment system is not set up well, and if orders are made irregularly. And uh, likewise, if you have to discard stock, if you have losses, there's not that many reasons why that would happen. So you could be overstocked. You just have too much stock with relatively short expiry dates. Uh, you might not be respecting the first expiry, first out policy and having uh, correct levels of stock, but still stock expiring because they're on the back on the shelf and they're not properly rotated. Or you could have damage by poor storage conditions. So typically by damage by if the cold chain is not correctly managed. Then as mentioned, you could have program specific uh, indicators, uh, which we have been discussing um, with WHO with the various programs. So for example, in EPI, you need to monitor open closed while uh, wastage, which is a mandatory reporting uh, requirement. And again, uh, DHIS2 is not blocking uh, from adding additional uh, indicators uh, to, the, to the standard indicators. 
HIV uses multi-month dispensing, so dispensing, so the number of patients receiving three months of supplies of ERV, ERVs during the visit. And tubercle uh, TB program, they have a, also special requirements to, uh, to monitor uh, TB tests. Okay, that concludes my um, presentation. Leave the floor open. Were there any questions in the meantime? Uh, yes, we do have a couple of questions from Slack. Uh, first of all, uh, if you look at the uh, technical support channel, there's a question there from Tantaly. Uh, are you able to see that, George? Okay, just a moment. Read it up. Hello, team. Would it be possible to integrate the WHO LMIS package, basic or advanced? within an existing DHS2 instance with already the existing needed data elements. Thanks. Okay, I think Scott can answer that question. Okay. Yeah, so it's a good question. I think that none of us, you know, if you're at this academy, you probably already have some DHS2 deployment in your country, you may already have even some supply chain monitoring going on in that. I think it's, would, it is actually quite common that countries will adapt uh, the WHO standards uh, packages into their existing systems um, so that you are able to um, uh, take what you already have maybe modify it or tweak it a little bit to um, to the WHO standards. And then also um, more importantly, start to be able to calculate these indicators that George has been talking about. Um, yeah, so it, I think it is, that's kind of the standard practice to be honest. It's very rare that countries have no DHIS2 set up already and they're, they're starting from scratch. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, there's also one question in the Ask About Logistics channel from Sofik. What is the stockout are defined by WHO? Is there any differentiate between SDPs or warehouse? Okay, um, we're working on the on the final wording, but basically we are defining us suggesting to define a stockout. The stockout occurs if if an item is unavailable on the shelf for any period of time during a certain day. So regardless of whether you had a basically, a, in theory, a stock out for one hour or for 23 hours, then that is one stock out day. And if you had a stock out of, uh, of a, uh, a drug product on Monday and you receive the replenishment on Tuesday, then basically that would constitute two stock out days. But if you have any other suggestion, I would be very keen on that. And I think that um, for for a warehouse or for a service delivery point, the the definition will be the same. So we would also like to to harmonize uh, the use of indicators um, across facilities. So if you have another definition uh, of a stock out, and if you can just uh, drop me a line, I will appreciate. Thank you, George. And yeah, the questions are running in now. Is there also an Android app for the LMIS? Um, so I, I think that there, the answer is yes, in that there is an Android app, a generic Android app to be able to capture data into DHIS2. It's called DHIS2 Capture. You can go to the Google Play Store or onto GitHub, which is where you're gonna find the most updated version naturally, and get the application. Now, is the app, and this is something we keep coming back to, I think folks are struggling to understand this a little bit. Is the application specifically for LMIS? The answer is no. Nothing in DHIS2 is hard coded for any specific purpose. DHIS2 is a generic platform. You have to configure it to be able to capture any kind of data, whether it's supply chain data or whether it's um, uh, 
immunization data or whatever, right? And so what we're saying is that we are developing the packages with WHO of already configured metadata. Now, metadata is the data about your data. It tells, it's defining the what, the when, and the where components of, of your data that's captured. So you have to define the metadata. WHO is defining, we're working with WHO to predefine that for you so that if you want to use DHIS2 for supply chain, then you can grab this pre-configured metadata approved by WHO, install it into your existing DHIS2 deployment, and then you will have the basic reporting system that George and I have been talking about. You can then, of course, use the Android application to start to capture that data at the lowest levels. Um, and to point out that the Android application also captures data offline. So once the user logs in, of course, they have to log in online. They have to then also be online to pull in the configuration. But once they are, um, uh, once they have uh, loaded the configuration into the application of the various reporting forms, then they can enter that data offline. But then you have to remember that that data has to be uploaded at some point. There's no magic here. They have to eventually re reestablish um, uh, mobile data or a Wi-Fi connection or something for that data to be transferred off of the phone into DHIS2. I just want to, to chip in that um, I'm working on the, on the project in my organization for the ICRC to integrate DHIS2 with Oracle. I will come back to that later. But this is I think this is absolutely critical to have the possibility to use a mobile device and to use the the app. If that had not been available in DHIS2, we will not be looking at the tool. And uh, I just confirmed um, yesterday that on my tablet PC, um, you know, the, the data entry and the, the sharing of data with the database works perfectly. I think that's one of the great strengths. Uh, Monica, thanks for insisting on the question. I understand what you mean. I didn't want to go into that, but for our project, we have also discussions. In principle, you could use the application even at the word level. Let's say you could have man you could manage your stocks at the operating theater level and at the pharmacy level. So we are looking into that uh, into that possibility. But in principle, the, the current concept that I presented is based on the assumption that every health facility has a central pharmacy that is supplied directly from an upstream medical warehouse and that that central pharmacy then will distribute um, goods to, to the services. Thank you. Uh, thank you, George. That's all the questions I can see for now, but uh, don't hesitate to ask more. I think. We well, have I, I think I think uh, Monica. Sorry, Martin. Monica is also asking a little bit uh, more in saying, does the location, does the stockout uh, definition yes. factor in the location, either at the facility store or at the service delivery point? Is there a situation where the store has no stock while service delivery units still have available stock? Yes. Sorry uh, for me. Sorry for missing that exactly. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, um, it's not part of, of the concept. It's a matter then of how you would manage. In my opinion, if you are, if you are in charge of a central pharmacy and you have a stock out, then that is kind of, that is by definition an emergency. Now you could argue that if all the words have stocks, then the patients are not suffering. That is true. But um, if you have a stock out, in, in a central pharmacy and the, the wards or the services, the service delivery points are not overstocked, then that still clearly indicates that you have a management problem because you should not be running out of stock. I, I would say as a logistician, you're lucky because the patients are still being treated, but it's still urgent uh, to, to remedy the situation. But it, it's a valid point. Uh, you could argue that instead of counting only the stock at the central pharmacy, you should include the entire stocks in the health facility, but on a practical level, that can be quite challenging in a big hospital where you might have 
40 or 50 different services where you would have to all count and aggregate. So if you wanted to go to this uh, service delivery point level, then I think one option would be to actually record uh, the stocks uh, in, in, in the, at the service delivery points, for example, in the wards. And we're actually looking into that, whether we could have a system where the central pharmacy would have an automated system of replenishing the operating theater, for example, based on their, on their stock reports. Thank you. And the, the last thing that I'll add to that is that if you are capturing the stock out data at any individual location, then of course in DHIS2 analytics, you are able to visualize that stock out at that location. So you can see it on a map, you can see it on a chart, a pivot table. And we're gonna see that I think in the Malawi use case later today, where they're able to see in fairly, you know, close to real time where the current stockouts are, or at least where the stockouts were last month uh, for their various commodities um, on a map specifically. Okay, I think that uh, Monica is touching on a really important point that uh, the framework is basically providing a tool, but there's quite uh, there's some management issues behind that. I mean, I I fully agree that if you have uh, stocks in a ward, then technically you could say the health facility has not stocked out. But just to, to make the point, if you have a big hospital, uh, like we are supplying in, in, uh, in south of Afghanistan with 50 services, and you, a single pharma, a single ward still has, you know, 20 tablets of paracetamol, you could argue that there's no stock out and there's no problem. But then, of course, uh, some patients are still suffering and you would have to redistribute the stock. So I think the strategy is to make sure that all the stocks are, all the wards or service delivery points are replenished in a systematic way. They have the stock levels that they need. And then the stock out in the pharmacy will reflect that there's a relative shortage in the hospital that needs to be addressed immediately. Thank you. Okay, uh, Scott, I think it's over to you now. I don't see any more questions. Uh, not to forget the Mentimeter. Yeah, we are, yeah, are we ready for that? Yeah, let's go ahead and, and do the Mentimeter and I can also do the word of the day after we do the Mentimeter. Okay, um, just give me one second that I sh so that I can share my screen. Here it is. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes, great. So you can go on menti.com and use the following code Let's give a few seconds to participants to join and then we'll start. Okay, let's start. First question. Are you currently recording the following regardless of frequency and whether manually on paper or electronically? Stock received, stock distributed, stock discarded, stock redistributed, 
stock correction, stock on hand. So yes or no. George, do you see the results we have so far? Yes, thank you. Yes. A few seconds again. Obviously, there are no correct or wrong answers for this one. So 65 participants are recording stock received. 61 stock distributed, 60 stock discarded, 51 participants recording stock redistributed, 43 participants do not record stock correction, and 57 participants are recording the stock on hand. Then next question. Mm, sorry. Are you currently using DHS2 for recording stock data, stock replenishment data, logistics indicators? Just a few seconds left. So 44 participants so far are using DHS2 for recording stock data. 64 participants using DHS2 for recording stock replenishment. And 50 participants using DHS2 for recording logistics indicators. Let's move to the next question. Are you currently measuring the following indicators, stock out days or similar indicator, stocks discarded because of expiry or damage?
Okay, we have 56 participants um, measuring stock out days and 50 participants currently measuring the stocks discarded. Let's move to the next and final question. What is your first impression on the presented concept? Ready to adapt, usable but requires modifications, total crap, try again. So we can say that majority of the participants think that the concept is usable, but requires modifications. Yeah, Alice, I was one of the folks who voted total crap just because I thought it was funny. <laughs> but um, so <laughs> I I'm think not that, surprised. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I think that what's important to understand is as folks are looking at this, and there seems like there is a lot of logistics experts attending this academy and like, you know, real experts. So I, we want your feedback. This is still very new. Just I was saying yesterday is this list of data elements and indicators was just finalized yesterday morning. Um, this is all brand new, uh, very much still ongoing process with WHO. Tell us what you want. Tell us how you think it should be modified. We can do it. So uh, this is meant to be used, useful for you. And if it needs modification to be useful for you, then we will make those modifications. So please don't hesitate to communicate how you think the modifications need to be done and be very specific. Tell us exactly what you think needs to happen and we can do it. All right, thank you for the quiz. Alice, is it time for the word of the day? Yes. All righty folks, the word of the day is, well, the words of the day are, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think in this time of COVID, we all need to be reminded and think about what is wonderful. Alice was quite insistent that this be the word of the day. Oops, yes. Sorry for, <laughs> sorry for the Slack notification. So please, in your attendance, and again, we use this word of the day to make sure that you were here, you were paying attention, uh, and this is how you get your certificates. So uh, please go in, fill out the attendance, and you are going to type, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And it is a wonderful world. Despite all the news. Okay. Well, we are now about to go into break. Um, George, there was one question from Sofiq um, in the Ask About Logistics. Uh, they are asking if, if we could explain a little bit more about the district level logistics perspective. So maybe uh, that's something that you could uh, respond to um, on t uh, via type during the break. Um, other than that, again, please go through the and fill out your attendance and we will take a break now, uh, a little more than 15 minutes. We will come back uh, at 12.15. So 12.15, the Oslo time. Please come back and we will see you on the other side of the break. <laughs> 